Hello, good evening. Welcome everyone to the Catfish Life Enterprise YouTube video on feed production and the ingredients used in feed production. So shortly, just drop your comments if you can hear us, if the, the mic is okay. And we are going to be inviting our guest shortly, which is Rudy Farm, Dora to join, to join us in the last live session. And this live session, we are going to be learning how to produce cartridge feed, how you can produce the feed you want to use on the cartridge farm. Now, the basic ingredients used in the feed production. So that's what you're going to be seeing in the live class shortly. So we are going to be enjoying, the guest is joining us shortly. She's already on the background. So I'm going to be bringing her in to go to the comment session and drop your comments. We are going to be taking live questions from the live class tonight. So the, uh, we have added the Prudy Farm that has to join to join us in the live class. So she will be going to be sharing with us different formulation in the cartridge to produce your feed. So just stay tuned. Drop your questions. We are going to be taking live questions for those that have the questions. So once she's on, she would unmute her mic, then she, she will start join us in the class. Now we are welcome to the, this is Cathy Sham Enterprise for those joining us for the first time. And we, okay, she's here with her class. So you can unmute your mic. Your mic, unmute your mic. Can you hear me? Okay, um, yeah. So I see the boss lady of Catfish of Catfish. Uh, this is the she's CEO of Rudy. So grow out into finger length, juvenile. So at any size of fishes you want, you can contact the Prudy farm. They base in Port Harcourt, but they do delivery nationwide. So have Dad. feed of this and this is out. So very good formulation on how to, if you want to get your feed production on the different formulation you want to produce good feed for your farm. Now we know today that there is high cost in the feed production. There is a high cost in the feed production. So there are a lot of persons want to look for alternative source to produce feed for their farm. Now, and for these alternative sources that people are looking out for, if the right formulation is not used, if the right technique is not used, you will not get a good result. Now, if you go through Facebook, you see different comments of, ah, I have fishes and they are, they are having crackhead. I have fishes and they are not growing well. I have fishes and different issues about their catfish today in all over Facebook, a lot of persons complaining. Now, if you take one of the root causes, are bad feed people use. Now, someone will tell you, ah, I want to feed my fishes bread. I want to feed them biscuit. Will it work? All those stuff can't work. So today, we are here to give you the proper guide on how to feed your fishes, the right ingredients used in feed production. So these are basically what this class is going to be enlightening you on. Now, also, for those that want to go into feed production properly, then you need maybe a machine. You want to use for your production, you can also contact Prudy Farm. They are into supplies of machine, extruders, pilletas of different sizes you need for your catfish farm. So, surely, let's when she said she will just give us a highlight, then we'll hear her speak. So, you can unmute your mic. Unmute your mic. Okay. Yep. Happy Sunday. Hello. Yeah, happy Sunday to you too. Yeah. So hi, hi, uh, your. Good. They are doing fine. Okay. Please, if you can hear, please, 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 please
Yes, I can see what you're saying, Prudy. It's now better. Okay, that means they can hear you loud and clear. So they can hear you. So show okay. me that. Give us a brief about who Prism is all about, who Dorothy John is. Give us a brief about yourself and the work that you're doing in the Alpha Structure. Okay. If Facebook should know her, you're on Facebook, you don't know if you are a beginner, you're a learner. So, if I'm so you left here a brief about going to into the class properly. <laughs> So you're a beginner, you're a learner. Yes. Hello. Uh, People are not in the class yet now. Where are, where are they? So those in the class, just drop a comment section. They're both in the class already, so they are commenting. Let's share the live link. So those can, other persons can join. Those asking for the link. Okay. Yes. So just give us a brief about yourself as small persons are joining us in the class. Okay. Okay, as you, uh, some people might know me, as you all know me, my name is Dorothy John. I'm the co uh, the founder and CEO of Foodie Farms Limited and a founder of Aqua Mammal Feet. So we are into feed production, we are into grow outs, we are into fingerlings and hash rate. So if you really know about the feed sector and the, the what comprises of being a fish farmer, you should know what is called an hash rate sector, uh, the grow out sector, and even in the feed production section, because in all this you are integrated. It's all in one. So I am that body that carries all these branches. Okay, go on, like, okay, how you? Okay, your mic is muted, Rudy. Maybe she's not having some ne network issues. So right back, she will continue in the introduction. So maybe we just wait a brief for her to reconnect. Maybe there might just be some network issue. So once you're online, just drop a comment if you can hear from us as we proceed in the class. Okay, she's back. Okay, let her just get set so as she continue. So those online, just drop a comment if you're online and you can see start us dropping your questions online. So once we get to the Q&A session, we are going to be taking your live session. Okay, once she's set, she will just inform us. Okay, she's getting set. Let's just give her some time to get set so that we can proceed. So drop your questions for those that have questions concerning feeding. I've seen a lot of questions online concerning feeding. So she's back. So you can unmute your mic and let's hear you. Okay, unmute your mic. Your mic, your mic. Your mic, or mute your, your mic. Yeah, I just did. I okay. just did. Okay, can go on. We have then. So I can see some people dropping their comments. And see now we can hear you the first lady. Yes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> then yes. Who for my saying hello to me, madam? Okay. Hello, Ufoma. <laughs> yeah, this is, your, this is your boss lady farmer. So we're going to really talk. Uh, basically, our concentration is going to really be on feeds. You know, most, most people, they really have because, okay, let me just do it like randomly so you really understand where we are going to. Many people, they really have it very difficult on when to sweet feed, on, on when to feed their fish, when they need to get weight, their desired weight, and when they need to get good. 
they have like me as I, I did the specification when I'm trying to categorize my fish. I do from the basics, which is from the, the, the from after hashway, I put them on starter pack. So on that starter mm-hmm. pack, definitely their crude protein that they need at that time should be ranging from 47 to 50 percent. If actually you're going with the right sauce and the right uh, ingredients. So from that stage, that's what we call the starter pack. Taking them from maybe your 0.5 or 0.8 mm to 1.2 to 1. Uh, 1.2. So that 1.2 normally for everybody, they know what 1.2 mm is. So but some person, they will skip that point going to get 2 mm. Fine. They can pick 2 mm feed, but does it really have the required nutrients for them at that point, that's the question you should ask yourself. So if you're feeding 2 mm, 3 mm, 4 mm, and 6 mm, should I really give my fish 6 mm at this point, or do I still want them to grow bigger? The bigger your fish, the, the more money you have. That's the secret yeah. in fish farming. The bigger the fish, the more money. The smaller and the less weighty the fish is, the lesser money you get at harvest. <laughs> yeah, so... So when you're yeah. when you're culturing uh, your fish, so you to have these things the in mind. mind. The when you want to produce your feed, you should have the same thing in mind, because it's whatever you have in mind that gives you the motive and the drive to make your production effectively. Not uh, producing for nine mm. Why buy you to produce for four mm? There are different uh, uh, ingredients inclusion when you're making different mm's. And sizes in fish. So that is just the breakdown of what I really want to discuss this evening. Okay. So she has t- t- told us that the bigger your fish, the better the money you make in the cartridge farm. Now, a lot of persons, they want to rush and sell their fishes. Maybe uh, just one month, they are rushing to sell. But what's really telling us that the bigger the fish, the better you will make. Now, I'm going to make your fish less big if you try to the fish. And for them to grow big, the right feed. Now, most of them can give them because we tell you 6 mm is cheaper than 3 mm, is cheaper than 2 mm. So, let me go for the cheaper the feed. So, not knowing that the bigger the feed, the less the premiums or the less ingredients they use, the less nutrients, yeah, yes, that they have for them. Yes, so. So it's not just to rush and maybe you want to ch- switch. Let me see, I'm rushing to that switch. So let me, other persons like, I know, so one person is they, they buy fish from someone else. They tell you, ah, this my neighbor is giving them six amen. Four amen. Let me go and give them six amen. I'll maybe one size to a size. We are on the same page, man. Okay, so so maybe we would so that's just it. Okay, someone um, IK, uh, IK is asking what is the feed formula to use to give. Okay, what is the feed formula? Can you please give us the material? That's that is part of the plan. Today. So she's going to give us a breakdown to do what? the formulation of feed. So she's is asking for the material used in feed production and the ratio. So I'm saying that is why we Okay, uh, we could do a bonus. No, you could do, we, we could do a giveaway. <laughs> he wanted to do a giveaway for him, so maybe you do a giveaway. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So most time this form. Okay. You pay yeah, you know when. Yes. yes. No, a lot of persons online they pay a lot for feed formulation, the 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 materials. But today we are giving away class, getting thing at this class, the ratio, the material needed, and even we have to this material. It's also important. We have to buy those materials. So that's the breakdown we are going to get getting. We have to class. get materials on a, as an affordable material because sometimes. You might buy uh, feed ingredients and you end up producing very high, higher than even the one, the finished uh, feeds in this market. That's another thing. So you sourcing out your 
sourcing out your ingredients very uh, cheaply and locally, it helps again in reducing your cost of production. Because sometimes yeah. we want to produce feet, but at the end of it, we are producing higher than what we are to buy already made feeds from the chef. You get it. So knowing the ingredients to substitute for another, because it's not all ingredients that you are to use when producing feeds. You can just use three ingredients, basically. Just three ingredients. And make sure you have your primates, you have your enzymes, you have your, your vitamin C. If, if some people, they do antibiotics. But me, I don't use antibiotics. Because um, the glycine, the methanol, they're already, they're already standing there on the vitamin C and primates. The primates consist of different enzymes that still will break down those things that you think you want to use antibiotics for. So it, making food is quite cheap and it's something very enjoyable. So we're going to give you steps by step on the ingredients and how important they are in, co in conclusion into your food production. So am I, are we ready to go through that journey? Well, we just started class. A lot of persons are joining. They are dropping their comments. So while the class is going on, you can if you have your questions in between the class, take those questions and test them. So just pay attention. Yeah. Why? Over to you, man. It's okay. Okay, you can you can proceed with the class. So those that have questions, we just drop the questions. I'll read out the questions, then you would ask the questions to them. Okay. So nutrition, feed, and feeding. You know, so when when you're talking about feed ingredients and all that stuff. There are so many things that comes in place, you know, for everybody to really know and pay attention to. So it's not just uh, feed ingredients and all that stuff. Because cash feed farmers are able to find a nutritional complete diet that provides required levels of nutrients and energy in a readily digestible form. Yeah. So when you want to produce feed, you should know that all your ingredients should be digestible. You not just carry bread, or carry um, spaghetti, indomie, and all that, that's because they said it's a source of energy, and you just mix it and just give them. They will not grow. They will stun because what you're giving them is just heavy. It does not have the required balanced diet to make it digestible. So that is it. Then it's very essential to provide a complete diet because natural feed organisms only supply a small portion, like not natural food which is what I was talking about, about the bread and all that. So when you're giving them those things, you need to add all that organisms, which are the primates, which are the enzymes, into the feed so that it will make it, it will break the molecules for it to work, to digest properly. So that is why when pro uh, producing feed, you need to pay attention to details, not just going to the market and getting ingredients. So we continue. So uh, cast feed intensively stocked ponds, except during the early life stage you know like catfish you know the way you, you stock them most people know they are newbies here they are still getting understanding on how to really go about catfish farming so but with this little i'm saying today definitely to put you on on ground and give you the know-how on what you really need to do so we're talking about the protein here now on catfish protein is the most expensive uh, nutrient of catfish feeds protein because getting the fish Fish uh, cons con uh, consumption is, is competitive with livestock and human. So getting your protein, what kind of protein do you want to use in your feed production? Do you want to use fish? Do you want to use uh, meat from the abattoirs? Do you want to use blood meal? Or do you want to use maggots? As we've been, you know, maybe in maybe our next class, we're going to talk about wearing of uh, maggots on how to use it for your uh, feed, uh, your protein in your feed production. So, but for now, we're just going to give you the basics and the importance of all these ingredients. So you have to make a choice on what you're choosing when it comes to proteins and what is less expensive, inexpensive to choose. So 
So consider able work has been conducted over the last 20 years. Because many people have been doing researches, you know, about what and what they really need to put in place so that we can really cut down cost of production. So fat is a concentrated source of energy. Fat is good for fish, but not when they are too big. So you reduce your their, their fat intake. That's why when I'm doing a production of feed, I reduce my GNC because there's a state they will get to the stuff, they'll start dying. And you will think the pond is the pond is being infected, but it's over fat that is closing up their lungs, so they don't really have the air to take more oxygen. What causes those mm -hmm. things for the fish to keep dropping? It's fat. So you have to reduce your fat intake on your fish when they are above eight months to one month. All those fish they use for bush stocks, they don't really need fat again. What they need is energy driving fats and uh, ingredients. So cafe trees are mainly plant-based. This plant-based is a uh, is animal based. You can go animal protein and plant proteins. So there are different types and the inclusion rate too is very, very uh, is different. Though fish from fries and small fingerlings, okay, contains some fish meal and other animal proteins. Major ingredients used in catfish feeds generally include soya meat, okay? Soya meat is a, is a plant protein. Soya meat is plant protein. So when you're going for your protein, you need to choose which one should be best for you to include? Soya meal is a plant protein. Cutting seed meal, corn and byproducts, and wheat byproducts. Wheat byproducts might be the normal wheat chaff that they've extracted from the factory. What they do, they call they call it holy. They've they've extracted the oil from it. Then the chaff is what we use as the byproduct to produce feed. And by that reason, it's making it cheaper and more affordable for us to get to feed our livestock with. So there are various types of catfish feeds, okay? The type being used at any particular time is a function of life stage, like what I just discussed earlier, and the size of fish being fed, whether the fish are fed during the growing season or winter. Because normally in Nigeria, we don't really have uh, winter, but our winter here is raining season now. Abi, winter and yes. summer is when the sun, the amatan, uh, so when yeah. the sun is too hot, it affects the growth of our fish. When the weather is extremely cold, like when the sun is too hot, they need more water. And the yeah. way they eat there is different from when there's hamatan. During the hamatan period, they don't eat well. They don't eat well. So at that stage, you don't think your inclusion or your formula is wrong. It is just the weather that's affecting the ingredients you're using at that time to feed them. At that time, you have to now know what and what to need. You need to give them more of vitamin, more vitamin so that it will enable them to eat as much as they can as, as when it is required. So, and again, antibiotic is incorporated. Like what I just said, like antibiotic is incorporated when you're doing your formula very, very well and, and stable. So, catfish fries in hatcheries are fed finely ground meal. What that means is, mean is uh, fine, finely ground. Normally, you could grant your 4 mm, your 6 mm, and 9 mm roughly. But when you're doing for your fries, it needs to be very, very fine. It's powdered, like the way the normal soya mean. When you're processing mm -hmm. soya mean, that powder from that looks as if you can lick it and there will not be any um, lumps. That's how fine mm -hmm. your fries fits should look like. So containing about 45 to 50 percent uh, crude protein, like I stated earlier. So you need about 45 to 50 percent crude protein when you're form uh, formulating for your fries. So once the fries are stuck in nursery ponds, they are typically fed in meal type, containing about 40 percent crude protein. Some producers feed fries with fines from 28 to 32 percent. Why some they remain at the 40 to 50 percent because they want them to grow faster. So, so large fingerlings are fed small floating pellets. So that's why we, I, I said that earlier, I said we have our nurseries, which I call them the starter, then I have the basic yeah. one, basic two, basic three, till the harvest points. So, that is just the categories of fingerling sizes and all that. So, large fingerlings, which is fingerlings that are larger. You know, they eat pellets uh, feed about uh, one and a half inches 
diameters, what I just stated, very tiny, one which is about 0. Uh, 0. 0.8 mm uh, to 1.2, 1.5 mm. So that's what our so small fingerlings they feed on. So antibiotics are administered to catfish through incorporation in feeds. So if you want to give them antibiotics, it should really be in their feet, not just giving them as if you're giving to other kind of uh, livestock. So they like feeding the antibiotics from their feet. So if they eat it, it's, it works faster and better in them than giving them in the water. Because most of them, they, can, they cannot even drink the water you think you've, you've, you've done your medication in. They'll just leave it there for you. So feeding is the largest cost in cat feed production, okay? When your feeding is the largest cost, so accounting for more than 50% of total variable costs, I'm just giving you like a run through yeah. because feeding, most of the people who produce feed and they don't know how to feed, then, you, then producing the feed again, you have, you have defeated the reasons why you just made your feed. So feeding is another aspect. So in, in the business of uh, production, you really need to know what it is and when to do some certain things so you don't uh, cause problem for yourself. So, so fish meal, now we're going to go for our ingredients, the basics and uh, the importance of our ingredients, when to use them and when not to use them, which of them is more vital, which one of them is more important to use. Uh, I, see, you, I, I see dropping comments. Yes, let me just read some comments. Maybe we'll just take answer them so that we'll not just miss them. So someone commented, he said, uh, okay, okay. Let me, he said, is it for a card fee starter to them into keep formulation process? He's asking for a new person that like he's card fee to keep formulation process. Mm, is is uh, that is why we are here, you know? Because in every business, definitely there are guidance, there are mentors. So reasons why you're online this morning is for you to have a mentor and someone that will monitor you through your processes. So if you choose us to be one of those important persons in your business, definitely we will come in and make it easier for you, so you could to, can produce and make profits. Because inventing into cat feed business is for profit making. So definitely you can do it, but you really need to study hard and know when to do this and when not to do that. So into the processes, then, then you can still be mature and now have a determination for your own self on what to do and how to do it. So it's not wrong wanting to do your own feed yourself. Okay. It's not wrong at all. But for, yeah. for, this, for a since that you're a starter, you can just keep learning and buying from already made <laughs> Fit uh, producers. Okay. Maybe it's going to cost you to not cost you too much because definitely to cost you. Okay, another question is say carfish car are bottom feeders. Is it really compulsory to use floating feed? Is that a car no. Floating feed is good. Yes, all fishes are bottom feeders, even the tilapia, even the cap, uh, cap and uh, catfish, even the normal African uh, clarus garapenus that we wear here in our part of Africa. They are most of them, all of them, they are bottom feeders. But when you stack when you have a baby and you want the baby to know how to eat with spoon, you have to give the baby the spoon and the baby continue knocking the spoon on the ground until one day the baby will put the spoon in his mouth or her mouth. So that's the same way you do your fish. If you give them sinking feed, they eat properly. If you give them floating feed, they eat properly. But what is involved in sinking feed is just the monitoring aspect. Monitor them well and know that they eat and make sure the water is always clean. If you can go through the stress of doing that, then you don't have a problem at all. Sinking feed is a go-go for you. Floating feed is a go-go for you. Depend on what it is, your perspective about it and how you can handle your farm. Okay. Now, the next of all, proceed. He said, what is the best antibiotics to use? He's asking what Me, is the I'm, best... I'm an organic farmer. <laughs> I'm an organic farmer, okay? But when the thing is so hard that maybe they've done so much and so much, so I, sometimes I can recommend some medications. I don't really have them up here 
like many of them because I don't use them often. So I really don't really know them, but I have them. So whenever I have any challenge, I'll just send the name. Some of them are Teresa Klein. There are so much, so many of them. But if you go through and follow our teachings, I don't think you need any antibiotics. Because if you follow the ethics and the, you apply every principles to catfish farming, I think you don't need antibiotics. Okay. Someone, the next question I say, okay, somebody just asked, do we really need antibiotics for our fishes? So I, I, I feel the last answer, of the right principles and the guide for antibiotics. Like I've seen a lot of people say, but there are a lot of farmers that have stayed in like five years, they have not experienced fishes having cracked the spine. So the right procedure, they use the right, so that means they avoid with the right precaution, you avoid a lot of challenges. So the next one said, what are, okay, say, please, at what stage can feed formulas be given to the catfish and the antibiotics? So it's what happened, like, let his own fish, his own feed, at what stage can you give it to the catfish? Hello, do you get a question? Okay. If someone, please, at no. the size, it's advisable to switch your bed out. Okay, then at what stage each formula give you to the catfish? At what stage you give them the form? Okay. You can start giving your fish at uh, what stage? Like, do you, can you start formulating feed for your own fish? Is that the question? Yes, yes. At what stage, after you have done the formula, what stage should you give them? Maybe can you start giving them the formula you produce yourself at the price, at the single, and at the juvenile? At what stage should you start giving them? No. If you have uh, for for fries, the reasons why I don't produce for my fries and my fingerlings and my my two mm is because those additives are foreign. They are not available in the open market in the local market. You, don't, you can't just get them. The cost of production is high. So before you finish producing, it's already close to what it is in the market. That is the finished uh, feed. So there is no need going through the stress of getting expensive materials. And by the time you finish production, it's already 15,000, 12,000. Like if I want to do my 2MM, my 2MM is about uh, 12,000 something, almost 13,000. And I can have other fees in the market that are about 10,000, 9,000 plus, or 12,000. So why go through that stress? So I'm not really saving anything on that level. So where the savings is, is on your 4 mm. So if actually you feed very properly with 2 mm, you can skip 3 mm and start doing 4 mm. If, they, if you fed them completely, reduce the, 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 the uh, uh, increase the two mm quantity of feed you have to give to them. Definitely, once they are done, that you see that they are grown enough to pick four mm. And if your four mm is a good, have a good composition, it will serve as three mm, but in four mm pelleting. So what I do for my fish, I give them four mm size of feed, but with a three mm inclusion. I will, I will, uh, I will increase the level of protein in, in it, but it's on the four mm pellet so that it will make them feel faster and not to waste my feed. That's another logic. So once it is 4mm, they pick it and they'll just be so full that give it them 3mm that is very tiny that you pack the whole basin and just see if they've not even picked anything. So what I do, I have to change, switch the protein into a 4mm um, a, a size to feed them. So you can feed anytime, but if you're producing your feed, you know your inclusion. So you can change it to 4mm and feed them on 3mm stage you still get the same desired results. Okay. Someone asked, let's just take a few comments before we proceed. Okay, say good evening. Say, please, at what size is advisable to switch from floating to stinking? I guess we have answered that question when you talk about all potentials that maybe tend to, after you introduce yeah. floating to them, a long period of parts to floating fish. So you can have them at least Start giving the this is floating to them. They they just from the second to start eating the floating. 
Yang bulu itu Okay, yeah. don't even on like when we did the test when we did the test on our our uh, juvenile on sinking fee, they picked it. Okay, but you just I that I said you need an extra monitoring. You just don't show the feed into the water for them like that. You have to you have to baby feed them like if you're using spoon. You have to give them and make sure they are picking constantly. So if you have a very large farm, can you really do that to all the ponds you have in your farm? It is a no because it's stressful. With sinking feed on that stage. But if it's a floating on that stage and your formula is good, then you can you can give them no problem. But getting the ingredients is a challenge. That is why I have abolished making two and starter pack. So what I'm into, I'm into grower and fisher. Because in your grower, that's where you give them more feed. You give them more feed in your grower stage. Your grower stage and your fisher stage, that is where they need. They require feed to build them up and give them weights. Okay. Um, Wolu sent a message. Okay, he said, oh, uh, the, the, the comment are much. Let me just see how we can take some of our time. Okay, that, okay uh, that's what I'm talking about. Thank you, my sister, Dora, from Morganic. Your comment on So he said, antibiotics are dangerous for the humans who eat this. It is one of the biggest problems here in Europe. So he was trying to say what you talked about being organic, about the antibiotics. So he was just affirming that it's an issue is faced in Europe also. So, feeding machine. Okay. So, uh, Anthony Namane, so before the end of the drop a WhatsApp number you can send a message to. So, we we'll drop a WhatsApp number. Once you send, a, you send a message to the WhatsApp number, you get a response for that. For the or before the end of the class, you just maybe can give us the, the price of the machine. I mean, the contact they can call for that. Okay, let's just continue. Maybe over time, we'll be taking some of the comments. We have some comments here. So, we we'll go, we we'll go on to the class and we'll do a big comment. Okay. So can I proceed? Yes, yeah, just proceed. So just keep your comments coming. We'll, we'll take time to answer most of your questions after now. OK, can I proceed? OK, so list of ingredients according to class of nutrients are, are below. So I'm going to give you a list of ingredients, you know, proteinous ingredients that you use. Fish meal is a proteinous ingredient you use in formulating your feed. So it's made from processed fish of different kinds with different level of protein. So sometimes our fish meal identify based on the level of protein in them, about uh, 72%, we have 75% crude protein fish, we have 72, we have 65, and we have 62. So anything less than that, <laughs> that means it's not going to really give you the results. That is why we have all that protein in the list that you can now add together to give you a specific uh, percentage that you have to make your fish grow better for you. So we have our feather meal. So if you're doing a fish meal, you know your fish meal you're, you're getting is not a 75%, it's not 72%. Because sometimes they can write on their the, the, the fish meal 72%. And if you test it, actually, it is the protein, but it's not up to that percentage. So how do you not enhance it? By sorting out other form of protein to mix, to get into the inclusion of the composition to make it a, a good and balanced diet for your fish to give them more good. But what we all need is fast results. So you don't have to just minimize or, or a, how would I even say it like, to limit yourself in just getting one ingredient. So you could say, you could do a fish meal, you could do feather meal, blood meal, buy pro, uh, product from the poultry, get them mixed together and you get a good result. So let's continue. So our fish meal, that's for it, is about 75%, 72%, 65%, and 62%. So anything below this category, category is not fish meal. So local fish meal definitely, it ranges from 45%. To 50 percent, all these locally sorted. But if you have a good fish in them, they definitely raise to 62 for you. 
So we have uh, feather meal. Feather meal is a uh, processed feathers of poultry. You know what poultry is? Chicken. So all the uh, livestock, so their feathers is still good. So either chicken, birds, any kind of birds, livestock. So it's a very rich in protein and could be used to complement the fish to reduce cost, like what I just said earlier. So if you have fish meal and if it's expensive, you could get a half bag of fish meal, then you get a one bag of feather meal to put in your composition. That may it will make it reduce your cost of production. That's what I'm saying. Making feed is inexpensive and very expensive. If you don't know mm. the right choice of material to include when doing your composition and your production. So poultry meal. Poultry meal, you know what poultry meal is the waste. Either means the offer. You know when you, you you kill chicken, chicken head and legs, all those things are poultry meal. So it comprises of more than 60% crude protein, depending on how it is processed. You know, when you're cooking your meal as a person, if you overcook your vegetable, you will not get the nutrient anymore. But if you cook it to the level and the temperature it required, it will still retain its nutrients to give you the what you want from it. So that's the same way of processing all these ingredients. So it can also complement fish meal. So if you're getting a, a, a poultry meal, we have a poultry meal, go to this abattoir that they kill chicken. All those are intense time. Those chicken legs and heads, get them together, use salt, boil it, steam it, then you dry them. You might even dry them or use your charcoal or your firewood, but don't burn them. Make sure they are dried properly, then you grind them. You can use them as your fish, your meal, your protein meal, your protein to make yeah. your fish. So it can also complement fish meat. When fish meat is not available, poultry meat can serve as a good substitute, you know, though in feed for other fishes, which is the, our grow out from our 4 mm to our 9 mm. It is very essential. And our 3 mm, 4 mm, 6 mm, and 9 mm, those are our grow out feed. These are our grow out stage. Then from 2 mm downward, our starter pack. So you should know the difference so you don't miss it when feeding them. So blood meal, that one is. Baba in feed production. So blood me you know the feed they like blood. And in my livestock, they like blood. Even maggots, when they eat blood, you see them growing so well. Maggots is very uh, blood is very good. So it's rich, richest of the proteinous ingredients. It's the richest. It has the, the highest of it. So it's it is more than 85% protein. Blood meal is more than 85%. So however, it can only be used in small proportion in feed because it has a limited type of protein. So you don't abuse it because it has a high level. You must put it accordingly. You don't overshoot. So if I'm to use a 200 kg of protein to make a one, kg, a one ton of feed, what I do, I will now divide them into four parts. Two parts for fish meal. One part for my uh, plant protein. The other part is for my blood meal or my feather meal, depending if I'm putting feather meal. That's how I do my inclusion. So you don't abuse blood meal because it's, it is very high, it is dangerous. So because it has a limited type of protein, overuse of blood meal can lead to broken, cracked head in fish. Those things you see most times, you say your head, your fish head is cracking. Oh, broken heads and all that. Blood meal can cause it because the protein is too high. So it will start weighing them off because there is no where they extract it from. Because one thing about feed that you know is this. Once you are overfeeding them, they retain the nutrients in their body and they excrete the one that is not required in their system. So for you not to waste your feed and they waste your feed, what you ought to do is for you to give them accordingly as they want per time. So another one is your meat meals. Meat meal is meat. It's our pigs, cow, goats, any kind of meat you can lay your hands on, but not human meat. They can eat okay. human beings too, but not human meat, because human meat is not good. You can't kill somebody because you want to do fish production if you don't sell any protein. So meat <laughs> so, so meat, uh, meat meals are good too. They are made from flesh of other body, part of domestic animals like dog, if you have plenty, plenty in Kita, all those 
Chihuahua dog do. Yo, 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 yo. Just pack all of them. Kill them. Use them and do feed. So no, <laughs> nobody will hold you. <laughs> so they are excellent in catfish feed and enhance feed palatability. Okay, so it really makes it very palatable for them. Now, I was saying that there are some persons that maybe they have poultry farms in their close to their fish farm. So maybe the fish, all the fishes that chicken that die. Yes. So a lot of them they use it. I know what most of them. Yes. Uh, but no most times you don't pray people's chicken die. So sometimes if they die, they don't want to tell you self. They'll feel that maybe you want to love them. So they'll just bury them on board. If you're close to this kind of person, then sometimes, like this season, now, this era of uh, chicken falling, falling chickens everywhere. So it's not it's not your cause, it's just the weather. You know, it's the atmosphere that is training that disease. Even in my farm, the birds, every day they keep dying, they keep coughing and all that. It's, it's a normal natural disaster that happens sometimes. So, but if you have such kind of um, farm around you that can really be open to you, even if you, get, you buy it with a little money, just not to, make them feel they are losing it out and you are gaining. You could just mm -hmm. make a negotiation. Whatever bed that comes out, sick, dead, and all that, you can just go carry them out and use them. Okay? Mm -hmm. well, we're not praying for people to be losing their things. So, another uh -huh. way is uh, meal for your protein is in the soya meal. Okay. Yeah? Let's take maybe a few questions. Again, before we go, okay, I'm here I do you sell arete machines? Yes, I sell pelleting machines. Okay. So I like, sell pelleting. Uh, I sell good extruding machines. I don't do sinking machines anymore because I want everybody to enjoy the floating experience. So you could produce anything you want to produce and enjoy feeding your fish and seeing them eat. The joy of fish farming is when your fish are eaten. I like it when they're eating a lot. So okay, I have good machines, floating machines that you can really get. Okay. Someone asked the creator, say, how can I make use of blood? He said, please, how can I make use of blood? In blood meal, you can get the blood from the in feed. In feed inclusion or in just general questioning? Yes, but, you know, in, in production, how can I how can I make use of blood in production? You can the, use it raw. You can boil. You can cook it a bit. You can use it raw. You can use mm -hmm. it raw. You can use it. You can boil it. You can you can drill out the water like doing a press kind of the way they used to do cassava. If you're doing gary, put it in a bag. Then you put a heavy thing on it. You make sure it's very tightly and keep it for the water to drain out. Once the water has drained out to an extent that you know that the water has really finished from the body, you can put it in an oven or you could light an altar, put fire on that and put the blood on it. So after a while, it will dry up, then you could not grind. So it will enable you grind it very finely to turn to powder, then put it in your inclusion. But if you don't want to make it that way, if you're doing a pelleting feed, like a normal sinking feed, you don't need to go through those hurdles. What you just need to do is just to mix it into the feed, the feed, the raw, the feed stuff, which is the raw materials. You just mix it in there, then you start to let it. So that one will help you as a means of uh, uh, making the, the the feed to buy like a water base to mix it wet base. So it will help you pellet and produce better. But if you're doing a floating feed, you need all your ingredients to be dry so you can crush and mix them before you do normal wet mixing. Okay. So we just proceed. We still have some comments here. So maybe we'll just round up so we we'll just take the question and answer. So yeah, we'll we just hold on. Let me just do a rundown. I think many people are writing and all that. So we'll have our soya meal, which is a very good protein. Uh, soya meal, we'll have the full fat. The full fat soya is the one they've not extracted through the, the they've not the hold. The holded means extrusion like uh, extracting oil from the nuts from the seed from the from the soya meal itself that the holy so but the full soya there's no the holding at all they've not the hold it they, it's just a fresh soya from the market that you get you fry dry or you oven, oven dry them then you grind 
that's a full soya and that one is still good too but your inclusion rate needs to be monitored they will have our gnc which is granite cake granite cake is not the normal granite on the market it's the granite cake that is being extracted it has been dehulled so after oil has been removed from it, it is known as gnc it becomes slung when oil is not properly removed from it like slung like the oil is not properly removed but when it's properly removed, it is GNC, granite cake. So there are different types of granite cake in the market. The ones that are properly done and the ones that are not. So you have to be careful when choosing ingredients. So we have our uh, bean seed cake. It's made from cotton seed. If you heard about, okay. If you have your bean seed cake, that one is quite, um, it's not always available. So you can substitute that one with your granite cake. So when you see bean seed in uh, feed formulation, you don't have to include it when you have granite cake. Both of them go side by side. Like they are the same thing. So you could use one and substitute for one. You don't have to include them in your, the both of them, except you're using a little percentage of this and this, maybe because of maybe you don't have enough GNC or enough bean seed kick. So we have our cotton seed. Cotton seed is made from cotton seed that has been the oil, which is the hull. So that is just it. Then we have sunflower. Sunflower most times we have it in our market. But mostly is in the nuts. It's a good source of protein and also a good substitute for soya. So if you have sun's flour, you cannot buy soya at all. So soya is not necessary when you have sunflower. So you can substitute sunflower for soya and substitute soya for sunflower. So if you know, not when you say how this, you say, ah, this is the feed ingredient. You do. But now I said, you could use three ingredients and make you feed formulation and you get good results. You don't need everything. Then corn. Energy ingredients. Now, what we just discussed right now are all proteins. So, on that protein uh, um, category, you could just choose blood meal and fish meal. You could choose uh, feather meal or animal byproducts, or you could choose cotton seed or soya meal or bean seed cake or sunflower meal. So, that is just the, all the ingredients. So, you could just choose two of it or three. You don't need to use everything. Then, GNC too, you could use GNC. You know, those are proteins. It's in there. Now we are going to our energy ingredients. Our energy ingredients consist of maize. Maize is used in catfish feed because it is high energy composition. The use of maize is recommended when the price is relatively low. What I'm just saying now. Choosing your ingredients and making your cost of production reduce is a vital knowledge when you want to do your production. Because you can say, oh, I they say I should use corn. Okay? I like demonstration a lot. I'm sorry about this. They say we should use corn. And corn is 30,000. <laughs> Just because people are using corn to make production, you two want to go and buy corn. And you don't know that they're not buying corn completely. They are buying corn, maybe one rubber of corn. Then they are buying all that ingredient that you don't know about to make the feed cheap. And they'll tell you they got 50% of their investment and you tell them they are lying. Man, there's no lies in this thing. I'm here to telling you now that, quote me anywhere, there is no lies. I produce a bag of feed. I will not tell you what I use in producing my bag of feed. One, I will not tell you. But I produce this very well. And in my farm, I can use three times half of what you use in feeding your fish. And I will use just one third of the, that part and feed. And I will have the same result in the same time that you to you spend that your money. So pay attention and know that there are ingredients in the market that are so cheap and they are very good. They are good energy source for your fish. And you don't even have plenty of money to make a production. Some people, they can use 3,000 Two five and make a production and they are making money. So why don't you learn the process? That is why, anyways, you're here today to hear from the boss lady's mouth. So let's awesome. continue. So <laughs> the boss lady, I would have been waiting. The boss lady, yes, and not Dorothy. <laughs> Dorothy is confusing many people because they don't know me as Dorothy. They know me as boss lady farmer or Prudy. So oh, I would have awesome. just done, just included Prudy. Or something. So maize is uh, is very expensive. So when you're doing your inclusion in composition of using maize, please let it be powdered in fish to enable to benefit fully from the its use. Okay, you need to grind it to be very powdered so fish can benefit from it. So processed cassava. You all know what cassava is. Gary, eba. What would they chop? But it's not that one that we used to eat. It's those bad ones. Those ones that are bad. Spoiled cassava. Maybe you can go to where the water has overflowed their farm. You can buy it off from them very cheaply. Even tell them to peel it up 
and wash it for you, cut them, dry them out, open dry them, then grind them into powder and use it. Or you can even grind them like normal way you want to make your gary. Let them do like gary for you. But they are not human consumable uh, anymore because they are not good. So, but they are for livestock rearing. So, gary is a good energy for your fish. It's a cheap energy source that can be used in catfish feeds. It is not a preferred source of energy in feed, except other energy ingredients is not available. Me, I don't use Gary, because I have other source of my energy, which is readily available for me whenever I want to buy. So, but Gary is inclu included if you are from a village that has plenty of Gary, you don't need to throw them away. You can use them and do your feed formulation. So let's go down, proceed to do. I know many people don't really know what a do is, but a do is something, is a... Is a material of different ingredients that you, you've mixed together and use water to bind. So it's not like a one ingredient kind of thing. They have different things comprising to make a dough. So a dough is made up of wheat flour that has been mixed with water. Okay. It has a good energy level and it's cheaper than maize. If you're, yeah, if you're buying maize for 210 naira, you're buying wheat at 16 naira or 18 naira. So it's twice the price of maize. So it's a cheap source of energy wow. and it's very very good because it has wheat it has cassava it has um other sauce sometimes you even have a uh, biscuit in, in them indomie and all that things you know so we are, we are still going down to really know what it is so that is just cheaper than dough uh, maize dough is waste from bread and biscuit factories bread and biscuit factories that's where we get dough from i use dough a lot it's very very, very good biscuit is I use biscuits in my fries. Like, if I don't have fish, I use biscuits, good fish meal, grind them to powder. Biscuit is a form of a binder. It helps in binding when you're making feet for your fries or for your fingerlings, okay? It's a good binder. But not too much of it because at that stage, you need more of good thing. So we'll go fast, fast forward to biscuits and noodles. Noodles wastes what we buy from Indomie companies and all that. So it can be used in uh, compounding catfish feed when they are available because their main ingredients are wheat-based. Same thing with what we have with dough. So milk waste. Milk waste is a very good source of en en energy. So if you have milk and you're giving to your fish, boom, they are very, very, they do very, very well. Okay? So milk waste is good is a, than protein, has more energy than protein and should not be used to replace nutritional ingredients. Many people, they think because they call it milk, so they don't need to put fish meal. It has more energy because it has gone through the heat process. Once anything has been processed, it has gone through heat, and that heat makes it to be an energy composition, not a protein or a, a nutritional, like a proteinous uh, composition anymore. It's not an energy compos composition. That's why we need to be very, very... Uh, we need to pay attention and be very, very careful when we are choosing our proteinous ingredients. Some people think milk is proteinous because it is milk, but it has gone through heat. That's the way they call it in science. Science. I really don't know. I didn't, I didn't read science. Pardon me. So brewery waste. <laughs> so brewery waste is another way for volume. We want to make your feet, uh, your feet to have volume. You know, you add a bit of um, brewery waste. Brewery waste is the grain, alcohol grains. You know, but they will extract the the alcoholic uh, uh, content from it. Then we made that they will be left with the waste, which is a shaft. So it's also a good energy based ingredient in cast fish feed, but it's not usually recommended. Like what I said earlier, it's not usually recommended. It's just a little of it we include. So molasses is sugar waste. It's sugar waste molasses. Okay. People that does sugar, uh, sugar that we take, the waste from the the, uh, the, the production is molasses. Molasses is rich in energy. It can be used as binding agent in locally pelleted. Me, I use it when I'm doing my uh, wet mixing. I mix molasses in the water I want to use in doing wet mixing. Molasses give them, it has an aroma that attracts them in feeding properly too. That's another way to use the molasses. So it's, it's also starch is used to binding agents in pellets. You know, to pellet your face is good. Mass is very recommended. Then fat and oil. Well, fat and oil is an essential feed ingredient it comprises of fatty acid, and they are also helping energy delivering in catfish feed. Some energy ingredients contain high level of fat and energy. 
example, full fat soya. That's what I'm saying. If you want to include it, very little, but it has a high level of fat. So slugs, uh, GNC, slug. Then at times, oil is added to feed to increase the energy in such feed. Some fat and oils can be used in feed. Uh, palm oil, fish oil, animal fats, palm canal oil, other edibles oil, like olive oil, any kind of oil that you think is edible, that you can use granite oil, any oil that is edible, that you can use. Then vitamins and minerals. So once they need oil, they do need vitamins and minerals. So a vitamin and mineral is a growth that, that gives them growth. Where you say fast growth, healthier, this and this is in these vitamins. Vitamins gives them that fast growth. Health and body processes are controlled by the class of nutrition. For example, organic and inorganic chemicals are found in vitamins and minerals. Most of the minerals and vitamins needed in catfish feeds are available in fish primates. I think I said that earlier before now, our lysine, our methanol, our fish primates, and other um, enzymes. Therefore, the use of primates is vital in catfish feed production. To ensure adequate uh, presence of mineral and vitamins in feeds, a kilogram of primates is recommended for 200 kilograms of feed. Now, when you're producing a one ton of fish, a feed, you are required to use five kg of fish primates, five kg. So in every 200 kg, you use 100, you use one kg of fish primates. They use your vitamin, one kg, use your primates, 500 grams, use your methanol, 500 grams. Or you could just use 200 grams of each of those things, 200 grams on 200 kg. So you don't really abuse it and put it over. So all the additives, like what I said, all the additives, any, many may be needed to replace certain nutrients that are not available in sufficient quantity in other feed ingredients. List of these additives are salt, methanol. Salt is used for tests, body process, and antibiotic in feed. When your fish, are, let me give you one, one, um, one bonus. But well, you're going to pay me later, but let me just say it. When you see that your fishes are cannibalizing too much, <laughs> they're cannibalizing too much, use salt to redeem that. How do you include salt? You reduce your water to a level that is very, very low. You add a, a sachet of salt into the water inclusion. You leave it for like 30 minutes, then you increase the water. You do that twice or three times a week, you see that cannibalism will tell you bye-bye. Okay, and when you're changing your water, make sure you're standby to throw feet for them to start picking. Those will help to reduce cannibalism in your pond and infection. So methanol is protein manufactured to complement its shortage in soya. See why all these additives are very important. Methanol is protein manufactured to complement its shortage in soya to avoid wastage. One kg of methanol is, is recommended for a ton of fish feed, like I just said now. One kg is required for a ton of fish feed. So when you're doing 200 kg, what you need is two grams to put in that inclusion. So lysine is a protein needed in fish feed, but not available in sufficient quantity in feed ingredients. A kilogram of lysine is also recommended for a ton of feed. So people will tell you, you use three, three kg of methanol and lysine. I've been seeing different compositions. It's very wrong. It is too high. Reasons for all these additives is just to break down or to, to enhance where your ingredients is lacking to make it stable so they don't have short age. That is why, because when you when your ingredients go through the process of production, it losses in, uh, uh, nutrients. So for it to get that nutrient back, you have to add other additives to keep them stable. So whenever you're, when you finish your production, you still have your desired result that is expected to have. So then bone meat is added to feed for strong bone formations. 
bone meal is calcium. So it's good for fish for them to be strong, bodily strong. So you don't need to miss it. So DCP contains calcium and phosphorus. Uh, phosphorus, okay? Phosphorus is a, a calcium the phosphorus, phosphorus, if you've heard it before. Calcium the phosphorus. So it also helps bone formation and enhancement. The use of bone meal is not necessary when DCP is used. DCP and bone meal are the same thing. DCP is the calcium for, uh, phosphorus. Bone meal is still calcium. So you have to substitute each of them. Choose one okay. and leave the other one. Okay. Yeah. So the use of bone meal is not necessary when DCP is used. However, bone meal is preferred because it is cheaper. So that is what I'm saying. You just because the name is DCP. Oh gosh, what is DCP? This one look very, very unique. <laughs> this one, this one, the This one, the This one, the Kwasha. Let me go with this one. One name. I show them nonsense. So I show, I show quality. But the quality matter. We're talking about cutting cost of production. Okay. So you have to buy bone meal. Bone meal is still very good. Your lysine is there already, enhancing your additives to your your feed production. Your methanol is a protein manufacturer, and you stand to complement shortage of your soya meal. So you don't really need another expensive things. What you need to do now is inexpensive so that your production will be at a max so you can still keep your profits coming. Just because you can produce feed doesn't mean you have to buy the whole expensive material in the market. It doesn't work that way. So then toxic binder. Drugs, etc. Drugs are those things I would say because see now drugs is at the end of this my my right up because it's not really important. Because once you keep all those things in check, you don't need drugs except they are really really sick. Maybe you've lost uh, control, you lost charge over your farm hand, or a mistake that you think you know how to do but you just did. So with that, definitely you could not start giving them drugs. But if not that, you don't need trust. So the above list is most common ingredients used in cashew trees. For more information on composing, you know, so you just need to just, that is just all the ingredients. See how simple it is. Chicken, huh? you know, get plenty of stress. And just more so. No stress at mm -hmm. all. So that is just what it is to have your feed formulated. Okay, so I'm going to give well. you a breakdown on the composition. I'm still here. Can you see me? Yes, but your camera is shaking. So it's blocked. Okay, so I've, do we still have more questions to attend to? Before we could go into okay, let's just take a few questions. Giving a formula that they can use. Yeah. Well, let's just take a few questions so that we'll proceed. Okay. Let's try to search them. We have missed some. Okay. Okay, okay someone asked, guys, how do I test the protein percentage? So I asked about testing the protein percentage. Hope you can hear me. We still have another question. See? Okay, I've taken that. So Wolu asked, is it okay, catfish farm enterprise and sister Dorothy John, please I have a question. What will you advise a Nigerian abroad who wants to come home and start fish farming? Myself included, please. My, my, my advice to who wants to come from abroad to start up a farm. Okay, we can hear you. Okay, you can see me. Yes, you have to come now. You don't you don't be scared. Is the, the business is very lucrative where you have people like like Catfish Farm Enterprise, you have people like Pudi Farms. Definitely you could talk, we could really discuss. I will tell you a workable uh, structure. 
We don't like starting a business so big. You have to start it small, master it, then you start increasing. Because you have millions in the account doesn't mean you have to put all into water. You have to start off where you can handle. As, as far as you can handle and you can control, you keep increasing your stock. So by then, you've already mastered the business. So you could keep investing. So there's no limit in catfish business. There's no limit in farming. So the more money you get, the more you want to expand. So, But you need to start off from somewhere. So you want to start up, I'll tell you, go ahead and do it. Because it is not even enough right now that we are still here doing this business. People still need more of protein to eat. And we are even slacking behind. Our percentage is not even up to our expectation. For normal, on a yearly basis, we don't even produce half of what we are to produce. So we need more people with the resources to come down to Nigeria and make an investment. So it would be a good idea for you to come and it would be my pleasure to work with Susan. Okay. So, like she has, uh, my boss already said, we, there's a shortfall in terms of farmers. <laughs> So there's room for those that want to invest in the cat. Yeah, there's a short for. Yeah, yeah there's a short for because. Yeah. Any business you want to go, let's say, employ somebody and you are calling on phone, how is the fish going? No. You that want to start, you need to have the right knowledge. That's why you are here in the class today. Goody Farm is here. Another person is here that can guide. Okay, maybe you just go with the formula, then we'll take the last question next. Okay. So we're going to give you a formula for fish produ um, production, okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, just go down with the formula there so that we'll take more questions. Okay. I uh, really wish I can pin it down. So okay, I don't know if people are writing or I can pin it down, but I can pin it down. Okay, and uh, some persons are still asking for maybe the materials. So, Yo, can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so if you want to make a formula, let me just do a quick one. Ingredients and the quantity, you could just write your ingredients, one part of the column, then the other part of the, col the column, you could put a, a quantity in bracket kg. So, maize. Maize. You have maize. Twenty-five kg. We do twenty-five percent, so you can do it times ten, times twenty, depending on what you want to produce. So you can say maize twenty-five kg. Soya meal. Twenty. Soya meal thirty kg. And um, GNC.
Okay, it's like your network is breaking. Hello. You can't see your network is breaking. Check your mic. Okay, let me, she's, uh, we'll add her back to the stream. And she had some network issues. So once we add her back, she's going to give you us the breakdown on the percentage. So we'll see a way to um, pinning down my WhatsApp contact on the comment section. So you just send me a message on WhatsApp. We'll give you the, a write-up for the uh, formula that they're angry and we'll send it to you via WhatsApp or through your mail. So just send us a WhatsApp message. So I'm sending my WhatsApp number. I'll send it, I'll put it as a pin chat so you can see the number there and send a message to us to comment to you. So Mr. Wole, okay, say so you're coming to Nigeria in two weeks time to start up your farm. That's good and nice. So I'll drop my WhatsApp contact, send a message, you would talk with you and know how to meet with you and guide you on the necessary advice you need in running your farm. So let me add her back to the stream so that we can continue. So we are trying to bring her back on the screen. So just give us a few minutes so that we can connect her back. So the next one went back. Okay, we are back. I'm back. Can you hear me? We are back and better. We, we, we are done, but now we are back with fully fans. So we are back. Yes, boss lady farmer. As we are not mm -hmm. on fully, but as we join the game, it's not a fully farm. So we are giving up the formula before we went on. 
So you just do a rundown of the formula. And my water pump out for those that need the material. So we just look a way to send it to the class. You can hear me if you are still online. Just send a message, reach out to you after the class. We can go on with the formula. Okay, we have your maize. This one is inclusion of we are doing um, about 800 kg. We have maize, 200 kg. We have our soya, 300 kg. We have fish meal, 250 kg. Blood meal, 100 kg. Fish prime mix, 5 kg. Vitamin C, 1 kg. Glycine, 1 kg. Mentanone, 1 kg. Salt to taste, 2 kg. DCP, which is DCP or bone meal. Okay, or bone meal, 10 kg. 10 kg of that. Then you could use either your palm oil or fish oil. Palm oil, you could use about Okay, he's trying to come back. He just did some left. Okay. Okay, so that's just it. If they got it. Hello. You can hear me? Yes. Some persons commented that you should click, uh, call the formulas again that you're a bit fast. Slow down. Can you hear me? Which is a uh, corn, maize, 200 kg. Soya, 300 kg. kg vitamin c 1 kg lysine 1 kg methanone 1 kg salt 2 kg dcp blood bone meal 10 kg oil 10 liters oil 10 liters okay whichever oil you want to use the molasses 5 liters so that is just what you need to make your feed. And this could give you about 200, 300, 300, 250, 100, 10. This could give you 860 kg. 860 kg divided into, I will do the cost into so you know how much you use in producing this 860 kg. So let's do a rough costing so you can really understand what it takes to make your own feed and what you should be saving yourself from. The maize in the market is about one, uh, 220 times 200 is equals to 200 and 
Okay. Times 220 times 200 is 44,000. Then we have our soya is about 350k at Naira times 300 is about 230 something thousand. 105,000. Then we have our fish meal is about I think 500 times 250 equals to. Can you hear me? Yes, how it go? Hello. Slow down a bit. Someone say slow okay. down a bit. So it's trying fish to prime is nine hundred naira. Okay, you can go on. So, making a calculation here and now, then like saying, for 2,000, 1,000. Okay, forty-four thousand plus hundred and five thousand plus one twenty-five thousand plus four thousand five hundred plus two thousand plus one seven plus one thousand two hundred and eighty three thousand two hundred divide by its Sixty. So how much do we have as the price for package? Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? So what we will be producing each feed from what I just calculated right now, with all what, with all what I just listed out now, once we will be producing one feed now, it will be about 4,900. For Package or for uh, for fifteen one bag. For a fifteen a fifteen kg, one 15 bag four thousand nine hundred. Wow, that's great. And in the market, yes, now kind of feed is within the one bag of, fifteen kg. Yes, I know a, a bag now in the market you, should, you can get it around uh, eight thousand five. For this quality, for this quality of feed. Is what you get as I aqualis for 11, a nine thousand eight fifty. Wow. Eight thousand five. Yes, eight thousand five nine. Because see, your blood meat inclusion is hundred kg. Your fish meat is two fifty. Your protein is already high. Yes. So, but if you now use a dough that is eighteen era, you have to now call down the production, the cost of maize by. Three, meaning you're going to reduce your forty-four thousand to like four thousand or eight thousand buying buying um, dough. So you're going to save about thirty thousand if you're not buying maize. You're buying dough. So if you're buying dough, you don't need to spend forty-four thousand. You can spend either eight thousand in getting two hundred kg of dough. So that is why I said. Production is very, very good. When you know how to formulate your feet, it's a good thing for you to do. You'll be saving a lot, whole lot of costs 
So then when you don't use fish meal, when you use more of protein byproducts that are cheap, you don't have to buy fish meal worth of 125,000. You can spend 25,000 in getting the quantity of fish meal that you're required as a protein base to make your feed by cutting down, by cutting down 100,000 off your budget. You can use 25,000, go to different market, market that they slaughter chicken and get all those, their chicken legs, chicken heads, and all that to make your, your formulation. So by doing that, definitely you're already saving up to, to 100 and something thousand off the 283,000 that you're supposed to use in producing your feet. But if you're lazy and you can't go about getting, sourcing out local materials, then you could just go to the store, buy them off and make your feet. Okay. So we have- So you don't even need to buy the blood meal. Yeah. Okay. So know. that is just the way to go about it. Yeah. Okay, I know. Already telling me the formula that you just gave us now, as well as the pricing. So maybe I will send it to you later. So just maybe before the end of the class. Would forward you maybe just the write up on the formula and the price. Now, a quick one, let's just be random. Okay, we are easily get in the Nigerian market. So, those that want to buy, how they can get they can sort these materials within the market. For those yes, in the market, we can get into the market in the where they sell raw materials. You can get to the market where they sell raw materials. You can get it from the markets where they sell raw materials. So where they sell raw materials, you get it. You get it in the feed stores, and uh, you can you can order for you for whatever you need in any other location, and you can get it delivered to your states. So you don't need to really. Some people don't really know how to go about their environment. That's why I'm telling you that source this thing locally. Cassava is everywhere. Chicken uh, slaughter is everywhere. Abattoirs for blood meat is everywhere. You can source them locally from your local markets. Then soya meal. You can buy those ones from the raw material stores. There's no raw, there's every every city have a raw material stores as far as farming is concerned. And they know the importance of selling fit stuffs. So many people in different locations and states, they have their markets and areas where you buy, you can get these things. You can go on Google and search them out. And you they get a direction to a store that is known to do such kind of business. But most of them. They are, they are into an organization whereby they register and they are online. So you can just get them there. Okay, so I'm going to ask you some questions. Okay, those like maybe they want to go into production, but at least want to start buying from you. So maybe just give them maybe a contact on how to maybe locate you. They want to buy, they want to make their orders. Okay, they want to buy feed from Pruby Farms. How can I locate? Um, so fully from certain feet from to Lagos to the part of Nigeria from where they are based. So you can just give them how to locate you if they want to get feet from you. How maybe okay, uh, okay. Yeah. As food, uh, Pretty Farm, she does supply feed from Port Harcourt to any state at all. Like this morning, we did a delivery to Calabar. Yesterday, we did a delivery to Delta states and other parts of the state, neighboring states around them. So if you want to get me, you can call me on 081-680-66511. For your ingredients, for your finished Fit, uh, produce, you can call me on that. So those, these are the number, WhatsApp and call. You can WhatsApp me on this number and you can call me on this number. 
So that's that is it. So it's way big to have any state at all. Even if you grow out, brew stock, anything you feel like our services, you can render it all over. Just put a call to us and we can attend to your needs. Uh, okay, now, um, for the machines, you know, some people ask about the machines, the piloting machines, the three that so I tell them the ranges of the machine. You know, they have different types of machines, different sizes. So, what are the ranges and what are the capacities of the machines for those that want to maybe go for the machine? And bear in mind, these prices might change. Okay, I'm like for a piloting machine, I don't, I don't recommend. Yes, I don't recommend I don't recommend sinking machine anymore because of the later complaints I, I got from customers about producing and its sinking and all that. So what I recommend now is locally fabricated extruded machine for floating feet. It does the feet floating, it cuts it into finely um pellets and it has different sizes. So it has a motor that runs it and it runs with 11, 15 diesel engine. And the cost of all these I just mentioned is going to call it a quarter. If you're feeding your fish, you're not selling the feed. You don't need a quarter. A quarter makes it more expensive. You're going to get the quarter separately for 25,000. You're going to buy a motor that's going to carry the machine for 75,000. Then generator, you're going to use in running the machine, 35,000. I don't know what it is right now in the market, but the last one I installed was 35,000. So those are additional costs to the machine. And it takes a longer time for it to be produced because they have to put so many things in place for the quarter to fit in. So, but when you're doing a simple extrusion machine, a local fabricated one, not a foreign one, a local fabricated extrusion machine that gives you floating feed that you can use to sustain your farm, no matter how large your farm is, you can produce for eight hours a day and it can gives you it gives you results in less than two time. Then you're good to go. So that one includes if that one is for So the cost of the machine is 630000 to get the locally fabricated machine. It gives you a semi-drying, as in it makes it, it comes out semi-dried. So you just dry them off the bits, they dried up, or you just feed to your fish immediately and sun dry the rest. Then you can feed off the next day. So fish, they can eat anything. Hence, it's not too hard for them to eat. So that is another main. So it was 630000 Thirty thousand, you will have a local fabricated floating feed machine. Okay. So the okay, a lot of persons have okay. The num your number again. Some person say they didn't get it. That you call zero your eight number one, again. Zero eight one six eight zero six six five one one. Okay, so just if you didn't get the number, I, I pinned the number on WhatsApp. So send me a message, I'll send you the contact of the boss lady to you, her WhatsApp contact. So call her for your uh, feed production, any need you need to feed production, even if you want to get your juvenile across any state in Nigeria, she can deliver that to you. Then somebody else, please put up all in one thing for us because it's very important to me. Okay, they say they need a stable format for the production. So do that. That's why the WhatsApp number is there. So send your a message to the WhatsApp number. After the class, we'll put up the form formulas in the table format for you. And the number is there already. You can call that number. So they want what? Is that how many kg? 
does the machine produce in one hour? Can you hear me? It can produce, it can produce up to 500 kg in one hour if you set it very, very high. If you set okay. it very, very high, it can produce a ton. It can produce a ton in three hours. So it's just you and your readiness if your materials are on ground. Some people think a ton is a small thing. A ton is not a small feat. You can't mix a ton a day and produce a ton. You will just collapse. <laughs> so a ton is not a small thing to produce. So you do it by by bad. So your machine, you don't break down yourself and your machine. Even me that produces to sell, I don't produce the, the least, the highest I can produce a day. Because of you need to carry the raw materials, put them in this hammer mill, you have to put them in a mixer, you have to put them in a bowl, and you have to put them back into the extrusion. The speed, the thing does not carry itself, except it's in a big factory. Okay. So hope we, we hope we have gotten the number. So if you have not gotten the number, you can send a WhatsApp message or we'll call the number again for you to take. Yes, the machine. Yes, someone asked, can the machine use electricity? Yes. You can use electricity, but do you always have lights? How steady is your power? Are you paying tariff that is high? Why don't you just go with diesel, whereby you don't have to wait for Nepal to give you light before you produce feed, feed for your fish? Do you want to keep your farm a uh, standstill because you don't have light to run it? So the best is to buy a machine that works just for the machine, like just for the machine. You have to buy an engine that works just for the machine so you don't have to be back, you don't have to have a um, setbacks when it comes in the production. Okay, someone is asking for the picture of the machine. So if I would, maybe after the class, you just sent a WhatsApp message, after the class you would attend to most of your needs. So just drop the message on WhatsApp in the numbers that have been called. So after the class, we'll send you the pictures of the machine. Okay, you say it's from Gini. Guinea Conakra. So it's not in Nigeria, but say you have somebody in Nigeria that can get, you can wave it or send it to him to Guinea. So um, just after the class, picture of the out. machine. They are going to we are going to drop it then. So yes. Yeah, so to that, so they said they need the machine. So I answered in the morning. Holy. The picture the of the machine is in my phone. I can show you how it's working. Okay. So I can show you how it works and all that. So it's right in my phone. Okay. Okay. Put the video on your phone. You have the video of the machine on your phone, right? Hello. Can you hear me? So, like, I've taken more. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm with you. So, maybe we'll just. Can you hear me? Have you. I'm hearing you. I can hear you. So since they already have your number, so they'll send you messages on WhatsApp for those interested in getting the machine. And for so those maybe uh, make ask for delivery of machines. So after the class, that will be communicated to them. Send you a message and we'll show you how the machine works and the prices of the machine and how to if you are interested in the machine. So at this point, we want to thank the boss lady for making it time to be with us in our class today. I know this is the first of our classes, and there will be more of this. Like she said earlier, that there will be a class of...
we'll find out time for that class. And also, peace production. I know this is just like an introductory class. There's a few in the production and also in the catfish production. So there's more the fish production and the catfish production to learn. So she's here to give us proper guide to this to guide at any time. So we'll still have more of this live session coming up subsequently after today. Take that time and the time will be communicated to everyone when our next class is moving. So okay, do you have foreign machines? So just to drop most of your comments, you can drop it. I'll send her WhatsApp contact as a pin message also on the comment section for those that couldn't get the message. Now the video will be available after this session for if you be available that they please so that they can watch from the beginning. So the video will be available. You can go through the YouTube channel to go and watch the video after now. So the boss lady, thank you. I don't know whether I have a final work for them tonight before we shut down. Hello. Hey. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, hello. Okay, you are back. So can you hear me now? Hello, boss lady. Can you hear me? Hello. Are you hearing me now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So just a final word for them. So and uh, maybe just call your number again. So I'm still getting some comments that they couldn't get the number. So I'll send let me pin the, the contact on WhatsApp for those that want to send you a message. So a final word not done for tonight. Final word to my audience. <laughs> yeah, we are two yeah, years. Just a final word. The final word for final word for audience. I just want to tell you one thing: fish farming is not magical. It is a practice. What you put in is what you get out. So be diligent and be patient when it comes to farming. And I want to give you one bonus if I leave, okay? I want to tell you that 
it's not by your your length of your feet that gives you the, the money. It is in the weight that gives you the money. So once you can hit 600 grams and you know your length of fish is very long, the best you can do is to do a weighty feed. And the ingredients for weighty feed are dough. You have to substitute your maize for more of dough. Then you put PKC, which is pancania cake. You put PKC. You have to reduce your GNC by two, inclusion of PKC. Then you produce and get your weighty feed to make you get profit. Once you want to sell your fish in two weeks, you have to stop giving them your protein kind of feed. You have to start giving them weighty feed. So I have weighty feed in this uh, that I produce that I give to all my clients once they want to sell. So you can still do well to call and to patronize aqua mammo feed produced by Prudy Farms Limited. Okay. Thank you very much for the time. So the aqua mammo feed is produced by Prudy Farms. So and you're already in Portaco. So for those that want to uh, need feed production, so you can send a message. I've sent the number on the comment section, Prudy Farms Limited. That's the number 0816806511. The number is there on the comment section for those that need the number. So if you need any form of feed, any area you are in, in Nigeria, it can be supplied to you. If you need fingerlings, juvenile, at any stage you want, it can also be supplied to you at a very affordable price and good quality. So Foodie Farms did of good quality. So thank you everyone for joining us in the live stream today. Now more session will be coming up subsequently. So we'll talk, we'll announce to you before the session is coming up and there is still more to learn the catfish farm and um, business. So thank you very much. Thank you, Lady, for joining us tonight. So until next time. So have a wonderful weekend. Bye. Bye.